Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Whoa! This is the greatest show! And now, here's your host, Clint Arthur. All right, all right, everybody. This is Clint Arthur, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the greatest show of all time right here on 77 WABC Radio in New York City. And if you are an author, a speaker, a coach, an entrepreneur, an expert of any kind, it's time for you to celebrate because this is the place where you learn how to be heard, how to be seen, and how to be wanted in a big way so that you can have the impact, influence, and income that you deserve, and even more than you deserve. Because as we all know, a lot of times celebrities get paid much more money than they actually deserve. How much money does Kim Kardashian really deserve? That's the question I want you to think about. And today we have a very special guest on the show. His name is Igor Pinchevsky. He is the CEO of itfirm.com. And Igor, thank you so much for joining me on The Greatest Show of All Time. Hey, Clint. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, you have a very interesting accent. It does not sound like you're from the Bronx or Atlanta or uh, Texas. Where are you from? And when did you come to the U.S. of A.? I was actually hoping you wouldn't notice. But <laughs> since you asked, uh, it was May of 1993 where my parents packed me up in a suitcase and sh shipped me to America. They put you in the suitcase. Literally. Literally. Literally, yes. You were a stowaway. Were you a stowaway? No, that was a joke. Uh, but oh, okay. we, uh, in May of 93, uh, my parents, my sister, my entire family packed our belongings, got on a train to Moscow, from there on a plane to New York, and from New York we flew into Los Angeles. Hollywood to be exact. Where, where did you start out? What was your city where you grew up as a little kid? I was born in Moldova, uh, part of Soviet U Union. It was the smallest and the poorest state at that time, probably still is. Wow. And what was your, what's your biggest memory from the time when you were traveling to America? What, was, like, what stuck out for you? The biggest one, which is going to be a little bit of a shock. So uh, we were immigrating at the time as Soviet Union fell apart and basically the local politicians and you know, powerful people were trying to take over all the government assets. So it was a really scary and dangerous time. It was the wild, wild west. The biggest thing that stuck out, that stuck out to me was we hired a security firm and that was basically ex-military guys, men with automatic weapons, right? The only time I saw a machine gun was when I was, was watching Rambo, right? So, and we're here sitting in a bus, you know, with a group of about 10 men, fully armed, bulletproof West, taking us from the train station to the airport. Because at that time, a lot of people who were trying to immigrate and leave the country were kidnapped, uh, robbed, among other things. Uh, because usually when you're leaving, you take all your possessions and your belongings with you. There would be gold and money and everything else. So it was really scary uh, for an 11-year-old to go through that kind of experience. Until this day, I still think about that. that you journey. had like 10 guys on the bus with you with guns. How much does that cost? I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I, have, I honestly have no idea. I was a kid at that time. Uh, but whatever it was... It was better to pay them to guarantee their security uh, wow. instead of losing everything. Wow, that's amazing. And I, I'm sure a lot of people got a lot of value out of that story. We're in very dangerous times right now. And uh, I know I was very, very enthralled by that story. So thank you for that. Uh, when you landed in Hollywood, uh, you were 11 years old. Did, did you go straight into the IT business at that time? <laughs> I didn't go straight into IT business, but money was always on my mind. And I had this entrepreneurship blood boiling in me. Uh, when I was about four or five years old, I can't remember exactly, uh, but I always loved money. Right? So my grandparents, it was some kind of a holiday. They gave me five rubles. Right? So I thought for a minute, how can I make that into more money? So being a kid, 
it came to me very easy, right? How do I make five into a 20? So what I did is I cut that up into four pieces. And this is a true story, right? And I go to my parents and say, look, grand grandpa gave me five. Now I have 20, right? They, you know, they obviously laughed and uh, thought it was cute. But when, you know, when we moved, I was about 11 years old. At about 12, uh, we lived in Hollywood on Santa Monica Boulevard. A lot of restaurants, Chinese restaurants were there. And uh, with my broken English, I went in and I asked, uh, because I saw uh, flyers from the restaurants, right? And somebody was passing out. I'm like, okay, I don't need English. I don't need any skills for that. Let me try it out. So for five bucks, a couple of hours and the free Chinese food, I was given the opportunity to pass out the flyers around my neighborhood. When you were 11? When I was 11. Okay, you ready for this? My first job when I was 10 years old was on the streets of New York, passing out flyers, for one dollar an hour we have something in common wow that is so cool man that is so cool uh how did you get into it and when did when did your adventure with uh computers really begin yeah so i always had the passion and uh i guess an easy understanding of technology right uh that was back in moldova uh and that was about 1991 when we got our first tv Right. We only had three channels, right? They were not on all the time, but they started airing Mexican soap operas, right? So except that there was only news, right? C communism and stuff like that. So my mom, my grandma, the only thing they would watch is that. And obviously there was no such thing as DVR and TiVo. You couldn't, you know, if you miss it, you miss it, right? So they, they had hook up a VCR and my job was to record the video, the show for them so they can watch it when they would get back home. Now, at one point, the tape got stuck or something happened to it. And uh, I knew if they would miss a single episode of their favorite Mexican soap opera, I'd be in trouble. All right, so I got, a, I got out a screwdriver, I started messing with the thing, I fixed it. So that kind of was the moment that I'm like, okay, I could fix things when it came to technology. And I started, uh, you know, working on that. At first I went to school, I wanted to be a surgeon, right, a medical doctor. I got into college and I was given a list of classes to take and years and years of that. And I'm like, that's just not gonna happen, right? I'm not gonna waste 20 years in school for something. I'm like, I thought about what's the next best thing to becoming a surgeon. I can be a butcher. I still get to cut and slice a couple of months but the money is not the same. Uh, so this is when I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go into a, a technolo technology field. I went to a private school, got my degree in network engineering. Uh, I was only 18 years old when I graduated and got my first full-time job working for a credit union as an IT coordinator at 18 years old. Uh, from there, I worked there for about three and a half years. I I really just liked my boss at that time. And I just said, you know, it was late nineties, early two thousands, internet was booming. And that's when I started my company. Very good. And tell us about the beginning of the company and what kind of work you were doing then and how that's evolved into what you do today. Yeah. So we started off completely under a different business model. Uh, back then, we would just sell things. A lot of hardware, software, we would just set things up. Uh, break and fix model, right? You call us when something breaks. Uh, completely opposite what we're trying to do today and what we do for our clients is being proactive in terms of making sure that they're secured, backed up, their systems are running and efficiently uh, improving their business processes and performance. Okay, great. And who are some of the, the big companies that you serve? Tell me about, are you allowed to say their names? And if so, what, you know, what are some of the names of big companies you serve? Uh, I'm not allowed to say all. We have uh, non-disclosure agreements. We serve different industries from high luxury uh, fashion brands that you're all familiar with that are in Rodeo Drive, Fifth Avenue. Uh, we, do, we do a lot of business with those companies. Um, 
gyms. I'm not going to mention any names, but you've seen the gold Venice logo. We had a governor that uh, was a good spokesperson for that company as well. Uh, we do a lot of healthcare, legal, accounting, CPA. Uh, it really, small business of all types is our target uh, market. Okay, great. And what is the, what's the best product you're delivering for clients today? The one that really makes you excited that you can deliver that solution for them? What makes me really excited is delivering a solution that will provide a peace of mind for them and me. Uh, and what I mean by that is having the proper backups in place, security, access control. Most business owners don't go thinking what would happen if an IT disaster strikes, right? If there's a power outage, a fire, uh, currently, you know, a real life scenario in Hollywood, we're dealing with riots. We had clients over there uh, that had their businesses burned down and vandalized. Well, luckily we have their data off site. Had they not had us or another company who had keep their data off site, they would be out of business. It's simple as that. So providing that peace of mind for my clients that regardless what happens, whether it's a man-made IT disaster or caused by mother nature, regardless, they'll be safe. They'll continue to operate. That's, my, uh, that's the solution I wanna to provide to my clients. Fantastic. And uh, have you been the recipient? Like, I, it sounds like you do really great work for great clients. Have you, uh, have you written a book? Tell us about any, any books that you've written. Yeah, uh, recently we just finished writing. I co-wrote a book called Hack Proof Your Business. Uh, if you wanna email me, I'll send you a free copy for that. Uh, it features 12 others, all IT experts. We each talk about a specific important thing that you should implement in your business. The chapter that I wrote about is about the backups. In my opinion, there's nothing more important, right? Things will break, you will get hacked, you can't stop that. But if you don't have the backups, you're gonna be out. What did you learn from, from becoming an author? How did that impact you? And why did you do it? Well, I learned it takes a lot of effort and time and hard work to write something. So my respect for the others you know, went up like there's no tomorrow. I, again, uh, our whole thing is to educate the business owners, our clients, and just people in general on what they need to implement. Uh, one of the stories or examples I give, when I graduated high school, I went into college. Uh, and not being from America, it was all new to me because it was only a couple of years since I, I've immigrated. And the first thing after the orientation day as I exit the building, there's tables with bankers. They're giving you credit cards left and right. You know, here's free money. I'm a poor, starving student. You know, I'll take some money. Nobody taught me about credit. Right? I wasn't taught that in high school. My parents couldn't teach me because it was new to them. So after a couple of months, I got myself into trouble. I maxed out all the credit cards. I had banks calling me, you need to pay. The debt grew, right? Had I known, had somebody teach me, I would have never got myself into that situation. And I feel like a lot of businesses get started because we know how to do something. We do it, sometimes the business takes off and we don't pay attention to anything else because we were never taught to look at. In IT systems, you need to look at these different topics. Uh, different items and different points. And this is how business owners get themselves into trouble because they're not educated. They don't know what they need in IT and they can't find a person that can provide it as well. And since we're talking on that uh, subject, another misconception is, or an issue in our field that I'm dealing with constantly is if I wanna be able to give you a haircut, you have beautiful hair by the way, I need to have a state license. I need to be licensed by the government. But if you wanna invite me into your business to fix your network, back up your systems, fix your computers, look at your client data, I don't need to have anything. I just need to have a nice smile and a business card and I'm in and I can do whatever I want. It's an unregulated industry and anybody can become a tech 
you know, we got the geeks, we got the nerds, we got the people calling themselves PC doctors, computer doctors. You know, I laugh at them, you know, pizza techs, you know. Uh, and this is not us. We're experts, we're certified, we carry insurance, we do continuing education, uh, testing, development, a lot of the things. And this is what you really uh, should look for when you're picking an IT provider is, are they capable? Are they gonna give me the best advice? Yeah, most, most of the IT guys that I know, they wear like a polo shirt with a logo and they're, you know, just, uh, my wife has a joke. She goes, when you talk to most IT guys, they look at their own shoe when they're, own, when they're talking to you. The really outgoing ones will look at your shoes while they're talking to you. <laughs> but it's true. You, but you are able to have a great conversation and to talk one-to-one -to, -one to a person like you're just having a conversation with them. I mean, for a non-native English speaker, you speak great English. Uh, how did you get to become so confident and uh, able to be a great communicator the way you are? Uh, thank you for that. Uh, it's my passion, right? I think if it's something that you love to do, there's nothing that's going to stop you from achieving that, right? I don't think about my accent or anything. I'm really passionate about technology and making sure, again, that my clients are productive and backed up. Uh, their data, their client data, financials, everything is backed up. That's really what they care about. And again, uh, you know, I'm not the only example and, you know, you do interview a lot of great uh, people, I'm sure, that uh, have similar stories. But you have to be really passionate about, and there's nothing that would stop you. Uh, that's why I love America so much. Nothing will stop you from achieving your uh, dreams and goals, except for not having backups. That will stop you. <laughs> that's great. Hey, here's the big question. Mac or PC? Uh, it's like, you know, asking, you know, which car is better, a BMW or Mercedes? I, up to about six months ago, I was only PC based. I actually got, and I'm talking to you from a MacBook right now, uh, because we're getting more clients that are Mac based and I just wanted to be able to learn and experience what they experience it. Uh, really, there's, there's a use case for everything. Business wise, a lot of businesses prefer to use Windows just because majority of applications are being uh, designed and run on Windows. However, because of cloud technology and cloud services, more and more things are becoming web-based. So it doesn't matter if you have a MacBook, a Windows device, a Chromebook, it's all gonna be uh, the same. It's gonna work the same way. Um, I find the reliability and the ease of use of a MacBook is great. Windows takes a little more maintenance uh, but it's more more advanced. The way I look at it and I explain things, you know, iPhone versus Android. If you want things simpler, you don't need anything customization, advanced things. You can use a you can use a MacBook. Great. You have kids, and are they uh, computer experts too? Yeah, I have a five-year-old daughter. She actually is uh, a computer expert. She, you know, whenever she wants to watch cartoons, she'll get the laptop out, unlock it, and uh, do all sorts of things with it. And I have a son who is getting his PhD in uh, Berkeley uh, in math. So he should uh -huh. be graduating in a couple of years, and we're very excited uh, for that. Wow, that's very impressive, PhD in math. Jeez. Yeah. And uh, uh, what is your favorite, you have like a favorite computer movie or uh, or computer character or novel? <laughs> um, you know, when we, when we watch movies about computers, uh, to us, it's like I laugh at them because to us, it's not real. It's, you know, it's more, I don't know, fake Hollywood, right? Too, too much like top. Uh, I would say one of my favorite ones would be Swordfish with John, Tra uh, John Travolta. Uh, I don't know that movie. Why do you like that movie? Oh, you should definitely watch it. As a, first of all, I really like John Travolta. I, I like the way he plays. It has a lot of action in it. Uh, there's also, I, I'm bad with names. Uh, there's a very good looking actress, actress in there. Um, 
I like John Travolta a lot. I met John Travolta at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in in um, Honolulu, and on Waikiki Beach, and uh, he's very nice guy. I I said, John, what's the most important thing you ever learned? And he said, to fly high. And I really think that's important for every business person to fly high and to aim yeah. high. You can't fly high if you don't aim high. And you can't fly high if you don't have ambition. And you can't fly high unless you learn how to fly. It's very important to learn how to fly before you try to fly high. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Uh, and this is where it's taking us 20 years to develop our systems and processes and best practices. And there were obviously some mistakes made in the beginning and early stages. But again, you don't want to have your IT systems, your information uh, being maintained by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing uh, because you're going to be flying high and they only know how to fly low. Uh, and that's going to be a problem in the, lo in, uh, in the long run. Yeah. And also, also it's very important if you're a high flying business person to have a IT service firm who's working for you or with you that also understands how to fly high because if the people don't share your vision for flying high, they're never gonna be able to support you to get to the heights where you need to go. Yeah. Now talking about support, are you married still? And uh, tell me about your wife and how, how she fits into this whole scheme of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm still married, you know, Good. We're, we're, very happy. Um, it, you know, she, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do the things I can do without her. Uh, her support, especially in raising the kids, the attention, the time, uh, you know, that she puts in, uh, you know, she cares. And one day uh, you'll meet her in person, uh, maybe uh, in Vegas. I think we have an event coming up. Uh, and she might fly down with me. Uh, it, it, it's hard to comprehend, but without that partnership, I don't think you can be successful. And behind every great man, there's a great woman, right? Uh, as they say, I'm not sure, you know, they say that the woman is the neck of a man's body, right? You could have the head, but she will be controlling where it needs to point. Cool. I never heard that saying before. How many years have you been married and what is the secret to the success of your marriage? Uh, the secret, I'm not sure if there's a secret, you know, uh, you know, we have issues like everybody else, you know, there's conflicts and difference of opinions. Uh, my, my grandfather, who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, and we were at his, uh, you know, bad couple of days before that happened. And, you know, he looked at us, he looked at me and my wife, and he said, whatever you guys do, and they've been married for 50 plus years. Uh, and he said, it's okay to argue. Right? It's okay to have a difference of opinion, but whatever you do, you know, let, let it go after a couple of minutes. Don't, don't go to bed being angry at each other, right? being mad at each other. Just forget it. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Right? So, and I think that's really the key to success is even if you get angry or you have a difference of opinion, there's a conflict, just let it go. Right? It's not important. And I think that's, I think that's the key to success. Very good. And how many years did you say you were married? Um, uh, it's going to be 10 years coming up. 10 years. Wow. Congratulations. All right. Um, now, this company that you are the CEO of, itfirm.com, how many years have you been running this firm and what did you do before this firm? So th this firm has been in existence for three years. Uh, before that, uh, I had another company, IT company on the West Coast. Uh, that I sold a couple of years ago, which was started in 2002. Okay, great. And what is the vision for this firm? What's your goal? The vision is a reward with small business to increase their productivity. So let me, let me give you a little backstory about the vision. Uh, when we meet you know, with business owners, decision makers, uh, they look at IT as an expense, right? Unfortunately, that's, that's the sad truth, right? It's not a shiny new iPhone 
brand new car that they're spending their money on. Uh, because they don't understand a lot of times that technology drives their business, right? It needs to be an investment. It could increase their you know, productivity of employees. It could lower the cost for the customers. It, with technology, it can do a lot of things much better. So when, when we meet, we don't talk about you know, servers and gigabytes and megabytes and all that stuff. We talk about your business needs. How can we improve your business? How can we make it more cost effective, right? How can we increase revenue, increase profit margins for you by utilizing technology? And this is really the passion. Uh, and the view for this company is to be able to increase your business, to grow your business. Naturally, organically, this is the clients we like to work with. The more you grow, the more we grow as we need to support your needs. And these are the conversations we like to have. It's not about you know, servers and backups. That gets all done. You know, how can we help you with technology to improve your business? And this is really the, the vision for the company. Great. Do you have like a slogan to that point? I have, a, I have a marketing company working on that. Again, English is my second language. Uh, I'm not good with words. A tagline that I used recently is, you know, we, hold, you know, we protect your profits and your reputation. Right. Okay, very good. You know, when I was at the Wharton Business School, I wrote about this in my book, what they teach you at the Wharton Business School. One of the most important lessons they teach you at Wharton is, use the best technology you can get your hands on. That's why I'm using right now a brand new MacBook Pro 16 inch that's souped up all the way. I'm using a latest generation iPhone Pro Max. I, I honestly believe in the best technology and I invest in it myself. And that's one of the reasons why I love working with IT guys. Yeah. <laughs> I love working with IT guys because I'm, I'm a big believer in, in technology. I mean, I've been in Mexico for more than three months now and I've been able to run my business and do everything just the way I would in New York City, except for the fact that I'm here. And that's because I've got my great technology powering everything that I do. So I am definitely a big believer. Hey everybody, if you are a small, medium, or even a large size business, and you want technology to help you to power your business, get in touch with Igor, the IT firm CEO. And it's at itfirm.com. And is there a phone number for people to call if they want to get a hold of you guys? Yeah, so they can just visit itfirm.com. Uh, the toll-free number is going to be 800-717-4849. If you're local to us, you can dial 704-912-4999. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Greatest Show of All Time. My guest has been itfirm.com CEO Igor. And thank you so much for joining me here on The Greatest Show of All Time. Thank you, Clint. It was a pleasure and an honor. All right, everybody. That's going to wrap it up for this week. If you are interested in celebrity entrepreneurship, check out my book, Celebrity Entrepreneurship on Amazon.com. You can find out all about it. And if you are interested in my event coming up August 7, 8, and 9, and you can join me and Dr. Oz and Dr. Drew and The Real Patch Adams and Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders, celebrity dentist Catrice Austin, Janae Noonan, and... The one and only celebrity chef Paula Dean at the Instant Marketing Miracle in Atlanta, August 789. We'll be back next week at 9.30 p.m. right here on Sunday nights with the greatest show of all time. The greatest show of all time.